you're in line for a divine reversal. 2 Kings chapter 2, and it reads as such in verse 19, and the men of the city said unto Elisha, behold, I pray thee, the situation in this city is pleasant. Now, the situation of this city is pleasant. In other words, it looks good, okay? As my Lord see it, but the water is naught or bitter, and the ground is barren, so it's not producing. Everything looks good on the outside, but on the inside, there's something going on. Bring me a cruise and put salt therein. Very important word in the scripture, salt. We'll get to it. And they brought it to him. And they went forth onto the spring of the waters and cast the salt in there and said, thus saith the Lord. I like that. I like when you read, thus saith the Lord. Not the church, you know, not your opinion, but saith the Lord. And I have healed these waters, and there shall not be from thence, or from now on, any more death or barren land. So the waters now were healed unto that day, or that day, according to the saying of the prophet Elijah, who spoke it. So Elijah was obedient to do what God told him to do. I'm believing God, and I have been, for some turnaround miracles. Not, and I, I, I'm, I'm talking about now, faith, and not next year. I'm talking about now, all right? I'm talking about a turnaround in your health, in your mind, the way you think, in your insecurities, in your, in your uh, flesh, wherever, in your finances, I'm talking about there is coming, and I believe this, or else I would not preach it, because then I'd just be tickling your ears. I believe there is a divine reverse going to take place. Why the word reversal? Because, you know, you, you, you get in your car. Everybody's car has, on where you put it from park, you have to go, there's an R there. Everybody's car has that R, right? Okay. If you don't, you got yourself something special, all right? And it's because the manufacturer knows that sometimes you got to put it in reverse in order to have a reversal. Nah, you didn't get it. Now, in other words, sometimes you pass up your destination and you have to put it back in reverse to back up a little bit. You say, so, so the word reversal is not a negative tone, okay? It's to change things, to turn things around. You put it in reverse and you turn around and you go back to where God wanted you to be, which is that destiny that God had planned for you. Now, David went from a nobody, just to give you some encouragement here, an unknown, doing a job nobody wanted to do, you know, bearing, uh, taking care of sheep back then, all right? But yet, he becomes a somebody known all over Israel because he slayed a giant. He had a reversal. He had a whole turnaround. He became the, the headline, you might say. How about Joseph? Joseph went, as we say, from the pit to the palace. We know that. He went from a prison to a prince. So it can happen overnight. And I know that's a little bit dangerous preaching that because most preachers want to pray. And if the manifestation doesn't come, we tell them, just keep praying, which is all valuable and all scriptural. It will come. All right? But I'm not preaching that today. I'm preaching, I believe it's coming today. It's coming your tomorrow. Amen? If it happened to them, why can't it happen to you and I? I mean, look, Saul went from, from you know, uh, chasing his father's donkeys to a king overnight. Why can't it happen to you? So now, I know you've been praying for some manifestation. 
all right? And I know you've been praying for it to even happen in this house. You know, that what we want to see is the natural evidence we want to see. But I come to tell you, don't get despondent. Don't get discouraged. It's in transit. Listen, you ever go online, look who I'm talking to here, and, and, and buy something, you know? You know, maybe from one of those home shopping places or one of those there, you know, that kind of thing, you know? Um, some of you have probably done that a little bit too much, but we won't go there. I'll leave that to you, okay? And what do you do? You pay for it through your credit card probably, debit card, whatever. Not going to ship it unless you pay for it. But here's the idea of that. The moment you pay for it, it's yours. But you go, you get off the phone, okay, and you... Go to your doorstep, the package is not there, but it's paid for. It's paid for. The moment he went to the cross, can I talk about the blood for a minute here? The moment he went to the cross, and the moment one drop of blood hit Calvary's hill, it was paid for. It may not be at your doorstep right now, but it was paid for. You got to tell your neighbor, it's in transit, it's coming, amen? All right. But you can say, because it was paid for, you can declare that it's mine. It belongs to you, all right? It might be in your mailbox when you get home. Church, there's a turnaround coming to those that have the faith to believe it's coming. You're going to go from cursed to blessed, amen? Come on. There's a divine reversal taking place. All right, now, in our text, let me break this down a little bit for you. The men of this city called on Elisha. This is shortly after Elijah poured down his mantle of a double portion on Elisha, all right? And he said, you know, they were saying, we have a problem. Everything is, is barren, all right? On the outside, it looks good, but we have some problems here. They had a, a land that could not reproduce or produce, all right? So these, these men in our text here recognized the problem was bigger than them. And when you recognize or do everything you could do, now you've got to believe that God is going to do everything you can't do. Amen? Now, look what they did. They took their problem to the right place, the prophet of God, all right? And listen... I'm not opposed to, to rehab centers, you know, or anything of that nature, um, you know, stress, um, what do you call it, reduction classes, you know. I, I, I'm not, you know, against uh, anger management, you know, or any of those things. But if people would just try God first, if people would just go to God first or even third, but go to him because he's the answer. He's the solution, church. They were dealing because it wasn't producing fruit. It was Jericho, and it's a very fruitful land. It wasn't producing fruit. They were dealing with the fruit when they should have dealt with the root. Amen. The root of it. And that's what happens in our lives, church, in Christians' lives. And the only person that can change the root or do something with the root of the problem is the power of God. Amen? You have to know where to go when you have a problem. Where can I go but to the Lord, David said. All right? Look, your car breaks down. You don't bring it to a dentist, do you? You know? Or if you got to get your teeth fixed, you don't go to the plumber. David said it like this. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to that rock that is higher than I. Amen, amen. Psalm 61, 2, it says it. In our text, they said something here. They said the prophet of God. Now, this is a, a, a nice place, all right? I want you to understand it, all right? But the water was cursed. It had some kind of poison, and what it did, it made the ground barren. Now, watch this. Now, it wasn't killing the men and women of that day, all right? But it was causing miscarriages. It was destroying 
the new life. Sound familiar? It was destroying what was going to be birthed. And what it was doing, it was, it, I'm going to call it this, was population control. Thank God for the men of that city who want it more than pretty. See, the land and the atmosphere and everything was pretty, but it was cursed. But thank God for the men back then that wanted to go beyond the pretty and they wanted to get to the purity and the power. That's what they wanted. They were more concerned about being good than looking good. The Living Bible says this. It was causing um, an unproductive woman and an unproductive land. So nothing was being produced, church. And church, here's the key. We have to protect our hearts and homes and be careful that they don't become bitter. Mm -hmm. All right, because, church, because it'll cause your land. Let me talk to somebody that's watching on live stream. Your, your land or your business, okay, to be cursed. When there's bitterness in your heart, I'm talking good right now, um, forgiveness in your heart will cause your land to be cursed. You will never produce what God destined you to produce with a heart of unforgiveness. I know this is strong, but I know you can handle it, okay? So what we, what we come to do here, church, all right, is turn the curse into a blessing, you see? Because what was being destroyed was the seed. And if you can have the prettiest, you know, package of tomato seeds or plants that you ever saw in your life, but if they're not going to be planted and if the seed isn't good, it's not going to produce. Amen? Amen? All right, now, here we go. Understand this. You and I have a divine DNA. It's not just a DNA, it's a divine DNA because it's not like anyone else's. I got to tell you, that in fingerprints just blows me away, okay? Because, you know, billions of people that have been on this earth, that are on this earth, and God finds a way to not repeat your DNA. Right, doctor? Definitely not to repeat mine. Thank you, Jesus is right. Amen? But it's the truth. You know, you know the saying when your mother said it to me many times, right? That's right. When you were born, Anthony, God broke the mold. Thank God. You know? Thank God he did. Nobody needs two of you. Thanks, Ma. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. But it was the truth. She didn't realize anything about DNA back then, my mother, you know? What did she know about fingerprints even? She didn't know any of that stuff. My mother never even had a driver's license, you know? That's why I was born in the, in the building, in the project. My mother never made it to the hospital. I was born, and they just threw me on the table, you know? <laughs> and you know the saying, and I never left the table. But that's the way it was. She didn't know much about anything like that. But they had their own way, words that kind of fit the technical part of them today. You have a divine DNA. Now, here's the interesting thing, and Jeremiah speaks about that. It was put in you before you were a thought in your mother or your father's mind. It was put in you. That's the love of God, church. You see, let me tell you something. The devil believes more in you than you believe in yourself, some of you. Some of you. The devil knows your future. The devil knows how powerful you could be and you are. See, he knows that. And it's sometimes where you don't realize how authoritative you should be and are and how powerful you are, not because of you. Let's get that established. It's because of the blood of Jesus. It's because of the Holy Ghost who resides in you. That's why you can walk in authority. The devil wants you to think that you're defeated. And if he can get you thinking that, he'll kill your dreams. He's a dream killer. 